a couple of days on Cape Cod in Massachusetts and I'm down here in East Ham, Massachusetts right now. It's about halfway up the Cape and you can tell by the sounds of the roaring water behind me that it's pretty close to high tide. If it's not high tide, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't check the schedule. But I'm standing here at the Nosset Light. Let me spin around. You can take a look at it. Nice old lighthouse here, part of the National Park System. And actually, actually there's a person who lives in that house back there, I guess. Uh, there's a sign on there, this is a private residence, but the lighthouse itself is a tourist attraction. I'm playing tourist while I'm visiting Cape Cod over the next few days. You know, I've lived in New England all my life, and I've never once been anywhere near Cape Cod. I guess the closest I've ever been is Plymouth, which really isn't Cape Cod, but it's sort of just on the cusp of going on to Cape Cod. So, looking forward, to, despite the cloudy and gray, on and off drizzly weather today, I'm looking forward to playing tourist here for the next couple of days. I'm standing at the salt marshes. If you want to read what's on this uh, particular sign, you might want to pause the video for a minute because I'm not going to stand here for a long period of time. I'm going to just kind of go upward now and take, let's take a look at what's happening with these salt marshes and the ocean in the distance. It'd be nice if this was a sunny day. I bet you this would be really quite spectacular to look at. It is pretty spectacular to look at now, but it'd be more spectacular on a sunny day. Very nice, very nice. Not often that a rock becomes a tourist attraction, but it's a very spectacular rock. 18,000 years old, according to the sign, was dropped here by a glacier. Doan, D-O-A-N-E, might be Doan, Doan Rock, considered one of the largest single rocks dropped here by a glacier in the Northeast, I guess something like that says on the sign. But anyway, there it is. I am in Orleans, Massachusetts, halfway up Cape Cod, checking out some of the historical sites. Uh, weather has not been very cooperative, but now I'm standing in front of the Jonathan Young Windmill, which is located in Orleans, just near the East Ham town line. Um, and this is, was built in 1720 in South Orleans, according to the placard. There's a placard over there. Built in 1720 in South Orleans. Uh, in the 1800s, it was moved up to Hyannisport. Uh, in Massachusetts and I guess instead of tearing it down they wanted to restore it and keep it for historical site. It was donated to the historical society locally here and uh, there you have it. It's got its own little area where you can come and sit down and just kind of look at it. I don't believe it actually spins. I mean if it does I'd be quite surprised but you never know. Uh, maybe they do on special occasions. I don't know. But um, anyway it's located right down the street from a shopping plaza and my hotel is only a couple blocks that way. But it's also right here along the bay, a nice looking bay. I love, this is what I really like about New England, all the history here. Uh, going back to the 1600s, some of these areas of New England uh, have some amazing historical sites like that. And I enjoy taking them all in. Behind me are, is a historical site. It's the Captain Edward Pennyman home. He was a whaler in the 1800s, a whaling captain, which of course the 1800s whaling was still a thriving industry. Nowadays, of course, it's uh, mostly illegal and frowned upon. But Right over my shoulder, those are whale bones from a sperm whale that uh, I guess the captain put an original set of them there back in the 1800s, uh, you know, to prove his successes. This pair behind me was a pair that washed up on the on the ocean, according to the placard, many years later. So it's still quite a fascinating thing to look at. This is Provincetown on the landing. I can see why this town is so popular not even Memorial Day weekend yet and here I am out here and I can, the place is already starting to uh, you know hop um, definitely a walking town definitely a walking town this is my first time here so those of you who've been there before who are watching this this is all new to me you may have been here and you know exactly what to expect but I've gotta say it's really uh, too bad it's not sunny I just wish it was a sunny day uh, just like yesterday was not a sunny day but anyway we are in Provincetown, and I'm going to take a walk through the area. It's definitely a walking village. 
as I found out, it took me quite some time, even during the off season, to find a place to park out here. So the narrow streets of Provincetown, all these old Oceanside homes go back a long ways, hundreds of years, couple hundred years. Uh, really something. I mean, all the roads are like this, narrow, one way. And uh, at one point I was driving here, I got stuck behind three delivery trucks that had no place to park. And they had to stop right in the road while they were delivering their goods to the different restaurants and businesses that are here in this area. Another nice old yellow home. I like that one too. Love looking at these old homes like this. Found these two pennies on the street today, so why not? Maybe it'll bring me some luck. And I am at the 1620 Tavern in Provincetown, off Cape Cod, the great tip of Cape Cod. And here I am with this imperial stout. This is from Devil's First Brewing of Dennis, Massachusetts, 8.3% alcohol by volume. An amazing, amazing. I've only just had one sip and I'm already impressed. I mean, this is good of the dark black core on this thing. And, and, and the taste is just remarkable. It's got these dark roasty malts. 8.3%. There's no no kind of alcohol. A medium body on this. Nice bitterness at the end. Almost like a cherry sort of fruity character kicking it up the backside. I mean, this is a delightful beer. And I'm looking forward to eating my lunch now. Pretty much at the most eastern point possible at Cape Cod. Standing here on the very tip of Cape Cod with the Atlantic Ocean right behind me. A lot of waves action going on here. Rain seems to be going on finally, so that's a good thing. And uh, really, this is quite on the very edge. Very windy here, so I'm not going to stand here too long. But I want to at least get a picture of myself out here looking out into the ocean. of my visit to Cape Cod. I'm in Hyannis at this point, and I'm standing in front of the John F. Kennedy Memorial Monument that is located in Hyannis in uh, May of 2017, and JFK was born in May of 1917, so this would have been his 100th year if he was still living, and this uh, monument behind me is uh, recognition of him. He was born in Massachusetts, of course, and uh, spent a lot of time out here, I guess, and uh, anyway, I'm continuing on my trip to the Cape Cod area, and um, again, this is really a nice... Take a look at that behind me. There's the port. I had a port. Right here in front of me, all these little guys are out here checking out their morning breakfast or something. So anyway, very nice, very nice. Also here on the site of the John F. Kennedy Memorial is another memorial recognizing the Korean War. And here's the placard in front of the memorial. If you want to read it, you have to pause the video because I'm going to take it off and take a look at the monument itself, which is right over here. And a very nice monument. This is a very nice park in general. So there are some free things you can go to in Cape Cod if you're looking for history. Uh, and down below, all kinds of people who have, I don't know whether these are former um, people who have all been part of the Korean War or just interested military veterans who want to buy a stone to help support the cause, but very interesting indeed, very interesting indeed. And here's another larger one over here. Very nice. I do like history. I'm visiting the Cape Cod Brewery in Hyannis, uh, Massachusetts, about halfway up Cape Cod. The brewery's been around since the early 2000s. Uh, the brewer himself worked at Long Trail for a while, apparently. I was listening in on the tour 
I didn't go on the tour, but they actually don't really do a tour per se. It's more of a, a room where you can see all the barrels and, and get a few samples. And it's more like a, a lecture and question and answer. So, and I was able to listen in and get a feel for what it's all about. But anyway, this is their JFK Centennial Ale. It is 5.5% ABV. It was just uh, first put into the barrel, uh, or I should say the, the keg, about three or four days ago. Well, today is Saturday, so yeah, about four days ago. They said Wednesday. And it's in honor of the 100th anniversary of uh, the birth of President Kennedy. And now take a look at this. You can see the orange tone with a you know, white head up top here. This isn't a plastic cup. It's a sampler. Okay, let's check out the taste. Oh, the aroma. I mean, boy, is that malty. Nice malt character on this for sure. Hmm, a hint of citrus maybe. But the malt character is very forward. ready like It's uh, sort of a... I hear a little bag flopping. I've got my bag on the table where I picked up some gifts today. <laughs> so, um, a bit of a floral, like tangerine, orange character to it. And along with a sweet malt. It's like a, a white bread character toasted taste. Mm, really delightful. Good malt forward character. Mild to moderate bitterness at the end. Body, there's a lemony sort of citrusy zing going on in here as well. Mm. Mild to moderate bitterness, but more of a fruity char character at the end. And this is a one-off, so it's a special edition, so I'm glad I get to try it. Very good.